Then I went to Guiyang, which was where I was going to be teaching. Guiyang is in the south of China. This is my friend Kay, who was a student in the U.S., and this is Kay's class. I had a chance to meet their whole class there. These are workers carrying stones up the side of the mountain. I told the students to study hard so they don't do this for a living. Here we are on top of the mountain overlooking uh, Guiyang. You can see it's a very mountainous area with the city uh, cut right out of the mountains. You see little peaks of the mountains sticking up uh, around the city. Guizhou is a very mountainous province. Uh, here's the Here I am with the students. They had some really cute little kids there. Uh, and they, I'm the first foreigner that, of course, they, they met. Uh, this one had to hold my hand climbing the mountain. I think she was going to catch me if I fell or something. Here's Kay again and a Daisy, my other friend. This little pyramid in the background looks like the Louvre, uh, but it's an imitation. It's actually the entrance to a Walmart, which is underneath... Uh, this park here in the center of Guiyang. Uh, and of course these people are exercising in the morning doing their Tai Chi exercises. This is a river that runs through the center of town. They had a huge expense cleaning it up. It's quite clean. This is a trip to the ancient city. Uh, it's a tourist attraction in, in southern China. There's a dog he didn't look worried. I, I heard they ate dogs in China, but this one didn't seem worried at all. Uh, here's some of the scenery around the ancient city. Uh, this is the wall protecting the city. And here's my friend Kay again, posing in front of the scenery. About this point, people ask me, how did I get involved in this? Uh, I'm just a township supervisor, a former township supervisor and real estate appraiser. What qualifies me to teach in uh, in China? Um, I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. Th this is some of the scenery uh, from Guizhou. Uh, there's a lot of water around. Okay, the next slide is a like a drive-in theater. It's right in the middle of that park that I took a picture of and the people come and watch free movies at night. I always like to take pictures of kids. Here's a mother with her child. We were quite an attraction. That's Marie, the other teacher that was with us. And here again is Chairman Mao. Here's a big statue in, in Guiyang. And this is a picture of the school where I was teaching at. That uh, statue is is a pomegranate, and the berries inside represent the students. Here's a typical meal. Uh, there's usually two or three meats and a lot of vegetables. Meat is cut up. That beer is uh, costs about 25 cents for that bottle there. There's Marie again, standing in front of the uh, sunflowers. And we... Uh, uh, there's Marie and Maureen there. We crossed a bridge with the water buffalo. There's David. You can see him in the back, kind of the Chinese equivalent of running with the bulls. Then more, uh, Marie had to get in front and took some pictures, and she just didn't realize how big those water buffalo are. And there she is, just about the time she realizes she has a problem. Uh, these are uh, jade statues that uh, Burma donated to China hundreds of years ago. Uh, they, they seem quite expensive. They're all life-size. This is a temple in the center of the town. It's a tourist uh, place, tea, tea house now. And now we're coming to my students. Uh, as we go through the students here, I wanted to tell you how I got involved. These are all my students, and they're uh, uh, all middle school teachers. Oakland University's had a relationship with Guizhou Province for about 20 years now, maybe 12 years, when I got involved in the program. And uh, I volunteered. Uh, everybody pays their way, and 
once you get in the city, the Chinese take care of all your expenses. Uh, but I, uh, I'm not a teacher. I, I had to go through an interview process. My sister is a professor at Oakland University, and she said that uh, uh, she wasn't going to participate in the selection process. Uh, but I think that helped me anyway, that I, I knew everybody involved in the program. Uh, some of these uh, people that came to the U.S. on the master's program that Oakland has uh, were friends of my sister. So I had a lot of friends in Guayang uh, when, I, when I arrived there because we'd had Thanksgiving dinners together and things of that nature over the years. So you don't have to speak Chinese to do this. I did have some teaching experience from the 70s. I used to teach real estate appraisal to assessors. And as a township supervisor, I was accustomed to speaking in front of a lot of people. And and I was accustomed to people not understanding what I was talking about. So that's what I told them in my interview. And the fact that my sister was involved in the program uh, didn't hurt either, I think. This was the class monitor who sponsored the, the trips to the countryside on the weekends. This is the Hangwashu Falls. These are the biggest waterfalls in China, and they're in the Guizhou province. It's very interesting. They, uh, it's quite dangerous. There's no handrails down there. Uh, you can get as close to the falls as you dare, and if somebody bumps you and you fall in, well, I think you'd probably die. Uh, but you can get as close as you want. And it's quite an, an unusual feeling to be involved uh, with that many people uh, so close to, to what's an obvious hazard there. The water, waterfalls were very impressive, and you get a lot closer than, than you would expect. Uh, coming up, we have another picture of, of a child. I enjoyed taking pictures of the kids. Uh, this is a, they they carry the kids on in a backpack kind of, and it's uh, pretty common to see the kids carried this way. Here's a Catholic church in Guizhou Province. The French did penetrate from Indochina, and they built a church in Guizhou, and in, which survives to this day. On on our way back from the waterfalls, I just stuck the camera up to the window and and took pictures of the countryside. Uh, Guizhou province is a little bit like West Virginia. It's got a lot of coal. It's a coal-producing province, and uh, there's a, just a heck of a lot of water, and there's some really uh, uh, beautiful countryside. A lot of these buildings seem very old. Here we are in a, in a Taoist temple. And we're back in Guiyang now, and there's a tea house in this temple, and there, of course there's a mountain. There's David getting ready to climb the mountain. And here we are on top of the mountain uh, taking pictures of what's quite a modern city. Uh, this is Guiyang, and you can see the little mountain top sticking up. We're about 5,000 feet above sea level. There's a, a meal again. And here's one of my students on a bridge. Um... There's, this is at a park. They have little, uh, oh, these are the monkeys. The monkeys attacked uh, while we were there. They actually ripped our bag of fruit open and, and, and took the fruit. Uh, here's, uh, we're getting ready to cross the bridge. I wouldn't cross it. You'd go right over the waterfalls if you fell off those stones, and I just was not interested in crossing uh, but then, just to shame me for being a, a chicken, uh, a guy walks across with a child on his shoulders. So they were they were quite brave. Here I am sampling some of the street food. Uh, that's, they told us not to eat it locally, but it it looked pretty good, so I tried it, and and I had no problems uh, eating it. And again, here's some water. Here's here's a farmer here that I caught out out of the window. <laughs>